All right. <clears throat> Chapter 25 on capacitors. Um, we are going to uh, define capacitor and capacitance, and uh, we use a lot of information uh, that I uh, talked about in the last chapter, which was uh, a potential uh, electric potential. We are going to use a lot of it here. So let's get started by definition of capacitor. A capacitor basically consists of a pair of electrically isolated conductors in the vicinity of each other. If you have two conductors close to each other, you have a capacitor. These conductors can have any shape, but they are referred to as the place of the capacitor. So when we say plate, it means the two conductors, one of the two conductors. When the capacitor is charged, its plates have equal magnitude of charges, but with opposite signs, such as positive Q, negative Q, so things like this. These are the, the two conductors. One has positive charge Q, the other one has negative charge Q. So this, um, this is a basically charged capacitor. It has some charges, but it, it can have no charges. And capacitors, usually in electronics, you have uh, like this. If you open an uh, electronic device, like a radio or a TV or uh, whatever, uh, you see that a lot, they have a lot of these uh, shapes, the small ones and big ones. and depending on the device. These days they are all uh, electronic. So they are very, very small ones uh, like cell phones and stuff. This one that you see here is a variable capacitor that uh, is used in the uh, traditional radios. Um, this is a variable uh, capacitor. When you tune a radio, you actually turn this knob at the middle of it and it changes the capacitor and changing the capacitor later on, you will see in this course that that changes the resonant frequency of the circuit. And that's why you tune to some radio station because they send a signal and the circuitry in your device does not respond to that unless you, are, uh, you have a circuit inside that resonates with that uh, particular frequency. So that is, um, how the capacitors were used. Now, of course, it is more delicate. They're all very small and everything is electronic, it's different. But anyhow, the basic uh, uh, concepts of capacitors still works everywhere. So we're going to uh, talk about basic concepts involving capacitors. So uh, what is the capacitance of a capacitor? So a capacitor has a capacitance, which is the characteristic of the capacitor. And it, this is the way it is de defined. It is the magnitude of the charge on each plate divided by the magnitude of the electric potential difference between the two plates. So if you have something like this, the magnitude of charge here is Q. You see one has positive Q, one has negative Q. The total charge here is zero, but uh, one of them, uh, the magnitude of each one of them is Q. If you divide that by the potential difference between the two plates, that, that is defined as the capacitor. So capacitance. So this is the definition. Capacitance is de denoted by C and it is defined by Q over V. If the charge is Q, of course here, the charge is denoted by lowercase Q, but we generally uh, denote it by capital Q. Divide by V, V also is the potential difference between the two plates. That instead of saying delta V, uh, we, we just say V, all right? So, uh, and these quantities are positive. So capacitance is a positive quantity. It is the number of coulombs on each plate per volt of potential difference, or how many coulombs per each, for each uh, potential difference of one volt, all right? And as you see, uh, if you increase Q, V increases. So these two are proportional, but then Q and V will cancel. Therefore, the capacitance of capacitor depends only on the geometry of the conductors and not on Q or V themselves, all right? Because Q and V are proportional. And the proportionality factor is actually the way these capacitors are and how close they are and how big they are uh, 
uh, and you will see later on how to calculate the special um, capacitance of a capacitor. The unit of capacitance is Coulomb per volt because it's just this Coulomb divided by volt. We call this uh, unit a farad and we denote it by capital F. So one farad is one Coulomb per volt. And then uh, usually we, instead of using C equal to Q over V, we cross multiply this and we call it, we uh, say Q equals CV. This way is easier to remember. Q is equal to CV uh, is the, our main um, formula in this chapter. So you should remember that it applies everywhere. Uh, charge on a capacitor is equal to the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage it, or potential difference across uh, the plates of the capacitor. All right, any questions so far? So this summarizes what is capacitance and what is capacitor? Capacitor is the device, capacitance is its characteristic, which is how much charge it can carry for every volt that you apply on uh, across their um, plates, all right? So there, there is a special kind of capacitor, which is very important, and it is called parallel plate capacitor. Uh, the, these are two flat plates that are close to each other, like this. This is, this is a, uh, one of the plates, which is a, a plate, flat plate, and another one down here, and they are close to each other. And uh, we, we denote the voltage across the two, I mean, potential difference across them, which I usually call voltage. And uh, the, the distance between them is D, and the area of the um, plates that are in front of each other is A. And if you look at the uh, electric field lines, if uh, there is a charge on one of them and negative Q on the other one, uh, you see that this is the field lines. Field is very, uh, very small uh, outside, but it's very large inside. Because usually um, the D is much smaller than the dimensions of these plates. And when that is the case, there is absolutely, I mean, uh, negligibly small amount of uh, electric field outside and all the electric field is inside and it is uniform if that happens. So suppose a parallel plate capacitor has plates of area A, distance D between its plates and charge of magnitude Q on each plate. Uh, from chapters 22 and 23, we know that the electric field magnitude between the two plates is sigma over epsilon naught. Remember, we said for each plate is sigma over two epsilon naught. And because between the two plates, they add to each other, it becomes sigma over epsilon naught. And outside, they cancel each other. So uh, this is the electric field. And we know that the potential difference is the electric field times D if the electric field is uniform, which is the case inside a parallel plate capacitor with uh, D being much smaller than uh, the sides of the uh, plates. So, which is also the case. So uh, V remember was integral of E dot D S or D L. And if E is uh, uh, constant, then can come out of the integral integral of uh, dl becomes just the d dif distance between the two. So v becomes e times d, okay? So we have e like that and v like that, e times d. And then uh, if we want to calculate the capacitance of this parallel plate capacitor, we, we can write as q over v, q is the charge of each plate, divided by potential difference across the two plates. But uh, instead of q, we can write sigma times the area. Sigma is the, um, uh, the charge density, uh, surface charge density of the uh, plate here. So, and for V, we can write E times D. And so sigma times A is the Q and E, which is sigma over epsilon naught times D is the voltage. And you see that sigma cancels out here 
and epsilon naught goes to the top, it becomes epsilon naught A over D. So the uh, capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor that has a surface area, the plate area A, and distance between the plates D comes from this formula. So this is a standard uh, formula for capacitance of a cap parallel plate capacitor. So we write here. Now, uh, let's say any questions so far is pretty clear. It's just a derivation of this formula. And now I want to ask you, a parallel plate capacitor has a capacitance of one farad. So this C is one farad and the square plates that are separated by 0.1 millimeter. This 0.1 millimeter is almost the uh, thickness of a paper. A uh, typical uh, paper is 0.1 millimeter. What is the length of each side of its plate? So the plate is a square and D is 0.1 millimeter. And we want to, see, and C is uh, one farad. We want to see what are the sides of the uh, plates. Is that basically what is the area? Can you calculate that? I give you a minute. All right. So I, I see that some of you found it. So let's let's do that together here. So we say C is epsilon naught A over D, but A is uh, D is 0 0.1 times 10 to negative three. C is one and A is L squared, length squared. All right. Um, yeah, they are big, very big uh, plates. So L squared is equal to CD divided by epsilon naught. And you see that because epsilon naught is in the denominator, that's a large number. So it becomes one times 10 to the negative four divided by 8.85 times 10 to negative 12. So it becomes 10 to the eight divided by 8.85 becomes 0.113 times 10 to the eight meters squared. And L becomes 3.36 times 10 to the third meter. All right. So this is 3.3 kilometers, which is more than two miles, you know, 3.2 miles is two, sorry, uh, uh, 3.2 kilometers is two miles. So this is more than two miles on each side, all right? So that's because this electric uh, epsilon not there. All right, so you see that a farad is a very large unit of capacitance. That's why we have a smaller units, usually you hear microfarad, which is 10 to negative six farad, and nanofarad, which is 10 to negative nine farad, or uh, picofarad, which is 10 to negative 12 farad, okay? So this is the justification. I just wanted you to see if you want one farad of the capacitance, it, the uh, area of the plate should be extremely large. Later on, we're going to talk about, you can use it, the electric to in, increase the capacitance of a capacitor, but we can only increase it by a factor of a hundred or a few hundred at the most. All right, so we have uh, these smaller units, usually you hear microfarad and nanofarad and things like that. Any questions so far? All right, other forms of capacitors, uh, cap we talked about parallel plate capacitors so far, but there are other forms. For example, a cylindrical capacitor, uh, which is two coaxial cylinders of length L, inner cylinder of radius A and outer cylinder of radius B. For example, here, this is the uh, inner cylinder and this is the outer cylinder. And uh, this inner cylinder has an outer surface, outer radius or a radius of A, and B is the inner radius of the second one, the second plate, which is like a tube. You see, for example, uh, coaxial cables are like that. Um, a coaxial cable, it has a 
cable in the middle and uh, a, a cylinder shape uh, cable around it. And uh, that can act like a capacitor. So in order to find the capacitance of this, uh, let me let me show you how to do the capacitance in this case because I don't have the derivation here. Um, we need to uh, find the potential difference for charge Q. Let's say it has charge Q, like you see here. It has charge Q on each plate, positive Q on the middle uh, plate, and negative Q on the other side. And we we can find the potential difference uh, across these two. Uh, you can you can use a Gaussian surface and apply Gauss law, but we already did that. We said that it acts like a uh, line of charge, right? And then the electric field at any distance r, which is which is this distance, see this r. This is the, we want to find the electric field at this point. Uh, e is equal to two you know, k lambda over uh, r. And lambda is Q over uh, the length of it. So uh, lambda is Q, the total uh, so negative, uh, small Q, lowercase Q, divided by the length of the capacitor. All right, so 2K lambda over R is the electric field. If you want to integrate that, if you want to find the potential difference, V, uh, delta V is equal to negative, but we are not interested in negative, let's put a negative, uh, 2k lambda over r dr. And 2k lambda comes out, negative 2k lambda, uh, integral of dr, dr over r is ln of r, absolute value of r, and evaluate between a and b. So it becomes uh, negative 2k lambda, ln of b minus ln of a, which becomes ln of b over a. All right, so this is the potential difference. And now you want to uh, calculate c, c becomes um, uh, potential difference, no, sorry, q divided by potential difference, right? So uh, q over delta v, right? So Q is just Q, delta V is, uh, uh, of course, the magnitude, we ignore the negative, 2K lambda, which is, let me write lambda, ln of B over A. And lambda is Q over, um, Q over L. So it becomes L over 2K ln of, B over A. And you can write 2K uh, in terms of the epsilon naught, you know, K is 4 pi epsilon naught, the two cancels becomes uh, 2 pi epsilon naught L divided by ln of B over A. All right? So this is the uh, capacitance of this. So this is the, um, the formula, right? This is the derivation. This is the formula. Any question? All right. So this is a, a parallel plate capacitor. We can have a spherical capacitor too, which looks the same in cross section, but in this case, these are spheres instead of being cylinders. So. A spherical capacitor are two concentric spheres with inner sphere of radius A and outer spherical shell of inner radius B. So how, if they are spheres, how can we calculate the capacitance? Again, we need to calculate delta V, but you know that outside this sphere, the electric field is like a point charge. So it becomes um, integral of E, dot dr from a to b so it becomes uh, integral of k q over r squared uh, dr and then uh, kq comes out kq 
and then integral of r integral of r to the negative two dr, and this becomes uh, r to the negative one divided by negative one. With that, if you add the negative one, that one goes away. So it becomes uh, delta v becomes uh, k q uh, one over r times one over r evaluated between a and b. So that means uh, k q uh, times one over b minus one over a. Okay. And then if you uh, cross multiply, sorry, make it uh, um, KQ, make a common denominator AB, then the numerator becomes A minus B or B minus A, doesn't matter because we are not interested in a negative sign here because we're talking about absolute value of delta V. And then um, C becomes delta V over um, sorry, again, Q over delta V, right? So Q, if you divide by uh, delta, del, delta V, Q divide by KQ, B minus A over AB, then Q cancels and you can write it as four pi epsilon naught times AB, divide by B minus A, all right? And then if uh, you see that if B goes to infinity, this fraction B over B minus A becomes one. So you can say when uh, B is much, much larger than A, you can write C as four pi epsilon naught times A. Right, because this, this b over b minus a becomes one. Then b is much larger than a, approaches one. So you see that even a capacitor, even a, a sphere by itself, conducting a sphere can be a capacitor where you consider the second plate is gone to infinity. So it has some capacitance. Uh, so the capacitance of a, uh, a sphere, isolated a sphere uh, of radius r becomes four pi epsilon naught r. All right, any questions on here? All right, so this is the formula that we have here, four pi epsilon naught, a, b divided by b minus a, and then say an isolated conducting sphere of radius r can be considered as a spherical capacitor with the outer shell being infinitely large when B goes to infinity. And the capacitance is C equal to four pi epsilon naught epsilon naught R. Make sense? So we have uh, cylindrical capacitors with this capacitance and the spherical capacitors with this capacitance. And even one sphere by itself can be um, considered as a capacitor with the other plate gone to infinity. We cannot say the same thing for cylinders because if you have ln of b over a and b goes to infinity, ln of b over a become, goes to infinity and capacitance becomes zero, okay? So any questions? All right. Uh, now we consider capacitors in circuits. This is a capacitor circuit where we have a battery and we have a switch. We call the battery B, B switch with S and parallel play capacitor like that. So of course, capacitor can be any kind of capacitor, but a parallel plate capacitor is a representative of all capacitors. So it has a, a side of side length of L and uh, height of H, the distance between the two plates is D, whatever, it has a capacitance C, all right? So this shape, this figure is a bit complicated. We have, we simplify the figure and usually denote this circuit by this uh, symbolized stuff in the, 
uh, for each element. So the battery, you see, is denoted by two parallel lines. One side is larger than the other. That, uh, that larger side is the positive side of the battery. And then the smaller side is the negative side of the battery. The battery applies a potential difference across the circuit. So that's V. And this is the switch. And this is the capacitor. Capacitor. It's, it's two parallel lines that are uh, the same length. So for battery, it's also two parallel lines, but they are different in size. And capacitor is two parallel lines that are sem the same size. So uh, that is our notation for these circuit elements. Does it make sense? Any questions? Right. So when when we talk about uh, when we talk about a circuit like that, what we mean is circuit like this, basically. All right. All right. But <clears throat> we can um, here the um, the formula for capacitance applies if it's close the switch, the charges go on this capacitor. This side becomes positive charge. This side becomes negative charge. And there's a positive Q and negative Q. And then uh, we have uh, Q equal to C times V. Remember, Q is equal to CV for the circuit because V is applied to, to the uh, plates of the capacitor. It gets a charge that comes from the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage applied to the plates. All right? So, uh, this is how we talk about capacitor. And now we have <clears throat> capacitors also in um, connected to one another. We, we call it parallel capacitors uh, that have the same potential. When they have the same potential, we call them parallel capacitors like these. These are connected like that. This is one capacitor here, one capacitor here, one capacitor here connected to a battery like that. And you see that uh, all of them have the same potential difference. Because remember, we say that whenever the, there is a conducting wire connecting conductors at different position, all of the conductors uh, connected by conducting wires have the same potential. So this side of the battery is a, is a con conductor and it's connected to this plate, connect, connected to this plate, connected to this plate. These are all uh, conductors with the same potential. And the other side of the battery is connected to the other side of uh, other plates, right? So these are all the same. Um, the lower plates are all at the same potential. The upper plates are all at the same potential. And therefore, the potential across each one of these capacitors is the same as the potential across the plates of or the uh, electrodes of the battery. Okay, so the potential here is the same as potential here, here, and here. Make sense? So this is what I said. We're going to use a lot in in this chapter in capacitors. So whenever two um, capacitors are directly connected with wires without interruption. These are parallel capacitors by definition. All right. Remember that. Don't look at, oh yeah, these are these seem to be parallel, so they are parallel. No, that's not the way it works. It is physically parallel if they are one plate of this capacitor is connected to one plate of the other capacitor directly by conducting wire. The other side also is connected to the other side of the other battery. So they have to have the same potential no matter what, because of what we learned that the conductors, uh, if, if they are connected with conducting wires, they have the same potential, all right? So these are parallel capacitors. And we can connect capacitors also in series. Capacitors in series have the same charge across, uh, 
on them. Uh, should be should be on them on their on their uh, plates. So in this case, you see this is an isolated piece of metal, right? Is one uh, one plate of one capacitor, and the other plate is connected with the wire. And of course, they are at the same potential, but that's not important in this case because the other side is not uh, connected without interruption, see? So it is, they are not parallel, but this piece, this piece of uh, metal, which consists of this plate from one capacitor and this plate from the other capacitor are uh, isolated. So what does it mean it's isolated? It means that there's no way ch charge can go into that part, that uh, isolated part, which is the uh, two, two plates. So whatever charge this, this plate has, it should be opposite of the charge the other one has. Because if you, if you have a switch and at the beginning, uh, the plates are uh, not charged, the capacitors are not charged, when you close the switch, there's no way charge can go into that part. Therefore, if one side gets negative Q, the other side gets positive Q and vice versa. So also if, because this gets negative Q, this side is positive Q. And because this side gets positive Q, this side gets negative Q because capacitor has two plates in the same uh, charge, opposite, opposite charges. Therefore, the charge of this capacitor is the same as the charge of this capacitor, all right? So the two capacitors have the same charge. When we say, when the capacitors have the same charge, we say they are in series. I mean, they have to have the same charge because of this situation. And these two are also in, in series because these two have to have the same, and the same charge. So all three of them have to have the same charge. All right, so we have uh, parallel capacitors and capacitors in series. And this is the characteristic that makes them series or parallel. And if this is not the case, then they are not in series or parallel. We can have capacitors uh, that are somehow connected in a circuit, they are neither parallel nor series. Okay, we are going to see that later on. All right, any questions? All right. When you have parallel capacitors, uh, it is possible to replace all these three, combination of the three capacitors with one capacitor that does the same thing in the circuit. Means that if, if this combination is connected to a battery with voltage D, the voltage V, then it gets all these charges here, um, one side negative, one side positive. So the total charge that accumulates in this circuit is some of these charges, right? And we want to replace all of these by one capacitor that does the same thing, means that with the same potential, it gets the same charge. We call this um, uh, equivalent capacitor, which is like that. So this is uh, C equivalent for all these three that when you connect it to potential difference V and uh, the upper uh, plate gets positive charge Q, the lower plate gets negative charge Q, but this Q is sum of all those charges, okay? And of course, this, there are three dots because there could be more of these, right? So however many that you have that are parallel to, each, to all of them. So this Q is equal to sum of all of these. And, and uh, these capacitors have the same voltage, all right? So if we write this Q equal to um, Q equal to Q1, plus Q2, plus Q3, and then um, you can write Q for each one equal to um, 
uh, voltage times capacitance. For example, in this case, Q, Q is equal to C equivalent times V, right? So here we can C equivalent times V equal to for Q1, Q1 was this, you can write C, C1 times V, right? C1 V. For the second one, you can write C2 V. So for the third one, you can write C3 V. And then you see V is the same everywhere. You can cancel V. Therefore, uh, therefore, sorry. So C equivalent is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. And if you have more, you can do the dot, dot, dot. Uh, or C equivalent is sum of all CI. We, in shorthand notation, we write it like that. Does it make sense? So when uh, capacitors are parallel, we have this formula for capacitance, equivalent capacitance. So for uh, parallel capacitors. All right, so C equivalent is C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus whatever, however many you have, or C equivalent is equal to sum of CI, all right? Where I runs from one to the number you have. So C1 plus C2 plus C3. Any questions? All right, so you, you can also have capacitors in series Capacitors in series have the same charge, but the potential difference across the whole circuit splits into V1 plus V2 plus V3. Because you see, if you go from here, go through all of these and come back in here, uh, you, you can write, we said that potential uh, doesn't depend on the path. So potential across the barrier, if you go from here directly to here, that's potential across the barrier. But if you go through this way, it becomes, uh, there's no potential change through the wire, but then you cross this resistor, sorry, uh, cross this capacitor, you get uh, V1 across that capacitor, uh, that's some potential difference. And then you go here, no change, no change, no change, and then cross this one, V2, and then no change, cross V3, cross V3 and so forth, you come back here, right? Mm -hmm. So the potential difference across uh, the capacitors add up to become the potential difference across the battery. So we have V equal to uh, V1 plus V2 plus V3, right, in this case. And if you have more of those, you can have plus dot, dot, dot. But then if you want to write this uh, in terms of the capacitance, you know that Q is equal to uh, CV, therefore V is equal to Q over C. And you see the uh, equivalent capacitance in this case has the same charge because it's when you connect this to the equivalent capacitance, this plate has Q, charge Q, this plate has negative charge Q. So equivalent capacitance has, uh, has to have the same charge, right? So all of them have the same charge, but the potential difference or this uh, potent, uh, voltages are different. So here you can, instead of V, you can write, write Q divided by C equivalent. And for V1, you can write Q over C1. For V2, you can write Q over C2. And for V3, you can write Q over C3. And you can continue doing that. And then you see that Q can be canceled. Therefore, C equivalent is uh, one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3 and so forth. So this is for capacitors in series, all right? So for uh, equivalent capacitor for series is this, one over C equivalent equals one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3 and so forth. And so we can write it this, this way, C equivalent inverse is equal to sum of C, 
uh, C inverse for each one. And if you uh, look at the math here, you see equivalent for parallel becomes larger than the largest of these, but this C, C equivalent this way becomes a smaller than the smallest of these things. This C's, all right? So when you connect two capacitors in series, you in fact reduce the capacitance of the circuit of the combination, all right? Any questions? All right, so let's move on. Here is a, an example. Figure shows a circuit of three capacitors connected to, to a battery as shown. Find the potential difference uh, V1, V2, V3 across each capacitor and charge Q1, Q2, Q3 on each capacitor if C1 is two microfarad, C2 is three microfarad, and C3 is four microfarad. And the battery has a terminal voltage of V equal to 36 volts. What do you think? What should we do in this case? So you see that it is a complicated situation. Do you see two capacitors that are in series or in parallel? So the idea is that you, you need to reduce the capacitor uh, circuit to a single capacitor with a battery where you can write, uh, then you can write the uh, Q equal to CV and then find something. For example, you can write the potential difference or you have the potential difference. You find uh, the charge for something and then go back. So uh, I saw somebody said C1 is equal to uh, C1 and C2 uh, are in parallel. What about C1 and C3? Are they parallel? or uh, in series or anything. So somebody says C1 and C3 are in series. Somebody says series. Oh yeah, so everybody says series. Why is it, why is it in series? Can anybody explain? Do you want to talk about it, why? So we said they are in series if you can have uh, two of the play. Uh, yeah, um, Matthew, Matthew says, because you, you have to go uh, through both regardless of path. Uh, Kevin says, because there is no conducting wire that combines these. Yes, uh, Michael says C equivalent between C1 and C2. Yes, so uh, Michael, you're right. So uh, you see C1 and C3, I asked about C1 and C3. C1 and C3 are not in series because you said, you said that uh, if you, you cannot isolate these two, you see, he said, if you can isolate, these are not isolated because there's a connection here. So it is not that the charge of C1 and C3 have to be the same. They don't have to be the same because charge can go in and out of these uh, two plates uh, from the, via this connection. And they are not in parallel either because uh, yes, this side is connected to the other side, but this side is not connected without interruption. So the, the upper plates, yes, they are in the same potential, but the lower plates are not in the same potential. So you cannot say potential across C1 and potential across C, C3 uh, are the same, they are not the same. So C1 and C3 are neither series nor parallel. C2 and C3 are uh, the same way, but if you look at C1 and C2, some of you mentioned C1 and C2, are parallel because this side of C, C2, sorry, uh, this side 
is connected directly with wires to C1. This side of C2 is also connected directly with wires to C1. So they have to have the same potential, okay? So C1 and C2 are parallel and uh, but C3 is neither uh, parallel nor series with uh, those two. But you can write, uh, you can rewrite this um, circuit this way, C1 and C2 are parallel, they, they are connected like that, you see? And then the combination is connected to C, C3 and then it is connected to um, battery and the other side is connected to the other side of the two uh, capacitor C1 and C2. So uh, topologically or physically, these two circuits are exactly the same, even though they look very different, all right? Physically, these two circuits are very, very, everything is the same between them. And then, C1 and C2 are parallel, you can reduce that, you put the equivalence of C1 and C2 and call it C12, that's a good notation. C12 is the equivalent of C1 and C2 that are in this case parallel. And then once you do that, you see that uh, C12 and C3 have this isolated part. So they have to have the same charge. Therefore, C12 and C3 are in series, right? And then you can further reduce that to C, uh, C123. So before we do that, then C12, because C1 and C2 are parallel, we said that C12, the equivalence of C1 and C2 is C1 plus C2 because they are parallel. And so uh, C1 plus C2 becomes five microfarad, two, two microfarad plus three microfarad, so becomes five microfarad. And now uh, C1, two, and C3 are in series, and you can reduce it to only one, uh, one capacitor. We call it C1, two, three, or you can call it C equivalent for the whole circuit, all right? So, now, what is C123? Uh, we, we can say that C123 is equal to C12 times C3 divided by C12 plus C3. Where did this come from? You see, um, if, if you have two, uh, two uh, capacitors in series, only two, this is very important, not for three or four or any, only two capacitors in series, uh, C uh, equivalent is equal to one over C1 plus one over, sorry, one over C equivalent is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2. And you can uh, do the uh, common denominator here, C1, C2 is the common denominator and the numerator becomes C2 plus C1. And then you have this equal to that. And then if you invert both sides, C equivalent becomes C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. So only if, if you have two capacitors in series, you can write the equivalence of these two or equivalent of these two as the multiplication of the two capacitors divided by the sum of the two capacitors, all right? So that's why here C123, which is the, the equivalent of these two in series is written as C12 times C3 divided by C12 plus C3, all right? This is a faster way of calculating the capacitance, all right? So we have this formula, so we can calculate C123. So that would be five microfarad times four microfarad divided by five microfarad plus four microfarad because C12 is five, right? So five times four is 
20 divided by nine, right? 20 divided by nine microfarad. You see in the numerator, we have microfarad squared. In the denominator, we have microfarad. So one of them cancels. So it means that if you, if you plug in uh, the capacitances in any units, it comes out the, the same unit, but they have to be the same unit. So C equivalent come, becomes the same unit. So we have 20 over nine microfarad for C123, right? And then we can calculate what is the charge on this equivalent capacitor? What is the charge here? Positive and negative Q. What is the magnitude of this charge? So we said the charge here, Q, is equal to V, uh, vol uh, voltage of the battery, times the capacitance. So we can say Q on one, two, three, which call it, we can call it Q one, two, three, equal to C one, two, three times V, right? So this becomes 20 over nine, C one, two, three, microfarad times V, which is, how much was V? Uh, 36. 36 volts. And now 36 and nine cancel out becomes 80 microfarad, microcoulomb. Again, microfarad times volt becomes microcoulomb, right? Farad times volt becomes coulomb or because uh, farad is coulomb per volt. So farad times volt becomes coulomb, micro just carries on, becomes microcoulomb. Since C3 and C12 are in series, so now, we found this charge, we want to go one step back. So because these two are in series, it means that the charge here is Q and negative Q is the same as this uh, Q, negative Q, Q, negative Q here. So the charge of each one of these is Q also. So since C3 and C12 are in series, they have the same charge as their equivalent is very important. So when you go one step back, you see if they are in series, they have the same charge as before. If they are in parallel, they have the same voltage as before. All right, so we say that uh, Q12 and Q3, uh, because they are in series, they have the same charge and they have the same charge as Q123, which is 80 microcoulomb. So this way we find the charge on this C12 and the charge on this C, we, we call it Q3 and Q12. So Q3 is 80 microcoulomb, Q12 is also 80 microcoulomb. That makes sense, any questions so far? All right, now we found the charges here. We, we can also find the potential difference across each one because for each one we can write Q is equal to CV. So um, we, we write V3 means potential across C3 is equal to Q3 over C3. That is 80 microcoulomb over four microfarad. That is 20 volts. The potential difference across Q, uh, across C12 is the same way. So that's V3. Uh, V12 is Q12 divided by C12. So we, we have C12 equal to five microfarad and Q12 is equal to 80. So 80 divided by five and micro cancels Coulomb per uh, farad, Coulomb over farad becomes volt. 80 divided by five becomes 16. And as you see, 20 plus 16, if you, if you go from here, 20 plus 16 becomes the 36 volts, that is the voltage of the battery, right? So everything works out so far. Then now you wanna go one step further back to, to this situation. And this C12 splits into C1 and C2 in parallel. So what is the same between these? because they are in parallel, they have the same potential difference and the same potential difference across them as in the uh, equivalent capacity. So this C V12 becomes also V1 and V2. So 
uh, they have the same, the same voltage. So V1 is 16 and V2 is also 16 because they are in pair. Now that we know uh, V1 and V2, we, find, we can find Q1 and Q2. Q1 is C1V1, which is two microfarad for C1 and 16 volt for V1 becomes 32 microcoulomb. And Q2 uh, becomes C2V2, C2 is three microfarad times 16 volt becomes 48 microcoulomb, okay? And again, you see that uh, the charge on both of these, Q1 and Q3, Q2, 32 and 48 becomes 80, the same as the charge on Q3. All right, so now we found the voltages across each one and charges across each one. All right, so the trick was to simplify, simplify, simplify until we get to one capacitor and then go back step by step and carry information along. This is the way we can solve um, circuits with capacitors. Any questions? All right. Okay, so let's move on. Energy stored in capacitors. So when, when we charge a capacitor, energy we, is stored in capacitors. So we can use the uh, energy uh, for something else later on. Uh, for example, you know, uh, like Tesla company is uh, making capacitors to, uh, uh, to store energy for charging stations and for uh, other stuff. So we can calculate the potential energy U of a charge capacitor by calculating the work required to charge it. Remember in physics, in mechanics everywhere, when we want to calculate the potential uh, energy, we calculate the work because the work done by the external agent is stored in the system. So here is the same. The work required to charge the capacitor becomes the potential energy stored in the capacitor. So suppose that when we are done charging the capacitor, the final charge is capital Q and the final potential difference is V, capital V. These quantities are related by Q equal to CV, all right? Suppose Q and V are the charge and potential difference respectively at any intermediate stage during the charging process. So this little Q and V is go from zero to cal capital uh, values, the, the final values. Then uh, we have V equal to Q over C or Q equal to CV for these as well. So at this stage, when we have this much voltage and this much charge, the work DW required to transfer an additional element of charge DQ is one. So there is, there is a capacitor, already it has charge Q and the voltage difference is V and we want to transfer some uh, DQ from here to here. This has negative Q, this has positive Q. We want to transfer DQ from here to here, how much work do we need to do? We need to do, remember the work or potential difference, uh, potential energy difference is equal to the um, dq, the charge times the voltage difference, potential difference, right? So V dq is the amount of uh, work that is needed to transfer uh, already uh, so there's already some charge here. You want to transfer another piece of charge. So the W is V dQ and um, V can be written as Q over C. So it becomes Q over C dQ, all right? So this much charge is uh, needed to transfer another dQ when already has some Q in it. 
So the total work W needed to increase the capacitor charge Q from zero to final value Q is this integral of DW, which is integral from zero to Q of V dQ or integral from zero to Q of Q dQ over C. And one over C can come out, we have Q dQ integral of Q dQ, and then it becomes Q, Q squared over C, right? Over two C. Because you see, we have one over C, then uh, Q squared over two, right? And then evaluate between zero and Q. If you put Q for Q, um, lowercase Q becomes, uh, one over C Q squared over two minus zero over two, right? So this one goes away. So we have Q squared over two C, right? So this much work is needed to increase the uh, charge of the capacitor from zero to the final value of Q. This is equal to the total work done by the electric field on the charge when the capacitor is discharged. So when, when you discharge the capacitor, in fact, the electric field does this, uh, this work and the capacitor becomes discharged. Then Q decreases from an initial value of Q to zero as the element of charge dQ falls uh, through potential difference V that vary from V down to zero. So uh, if we define potential energy U of an uncharged capacitor to be zero, then W is equal to the potential energy of the charged capacitor. So basically this is the potential of the uh, charged capacitor. So we call it U, U equals Q, Q squared over, over two C or because Q is equal to CV, so becomes, this becomes CV squared. So it becomes C squared, V squared over two Cs. One of the Cs cancel, becomes one half CV squared. Or you can write this also as Q times V because Q over C is V and one of the Qs times V becomes one half Q times V. So you have three different formulas or potential difference that they are all related because Q is equal to CV, right? So whenever you want to calculate the potential, dif uh, potential energy in a capacitor that is charged to potential V or charge Q, you can use either of these three forms, depending on what you have. All right, now, any questions here? Now we want to find the energy density of electric field. So let's see, we, we have these uh, electric field lines of a parallel plate capacitor. We know that the capacitance is epsilon naught A over D. And we know that the electric field is sigma over epsilon naught. And we know that sigma is Q over A, all right? So for a parallel plate capacitor, we assume that the uh, fringing effect is negligible. Fringing effect is all these uh, uh, electric field that are outside. We said that they are negligible if uh, the distance between the two plates is much smaller than the uh, dimensions of the plates. So it means that D is much smaller than square root of A. Then the E field is only non-zero in between the two plates and is uniform in between the two plates, all right? Then energy of the charge capacitor is U, which is Q squared over two C, all right? But Q can be written in terms of this. Q is sigma times A. So it becomes sigma squared, A squared, and C is this. Right, Let, let's re replace those sigma squared A squared divided by two epsilon naught A over D. You see one of the A's can be canceled and D goes up, right? So this becomes sigma squared AD divided by two epsilon naught. Are you following? 
uh, one of the A's are canceled. So we have A only in the numerator and D is in the denominator of denominator goes up in the numerator. So it becomes sigma squared A D divided by two epsilon naught. But instead of sigma squared, we can write E squared epsilon naught squared. And then epsilon naught can get canceled. Right, so instead of sigma squared, we write epsilon naught squared, E squared times AD over epsilon naught. So you can write this as one half epsilon naught E squared times A times D. All right, now what is this A, that A times D? Can anybody tell? The area of the plates times the distance between the two plates. Can anybody shout it out? Uh, area times the height becomes the volume. Yes, the volume of the space between the two plates. So AD is the volume of space in between the plates. If we define the energy per unit volume, which is UE, lowercase u with the uh, uh, subscript E, we, we call it U, the energy divided by the area, uh, the volume. Energy per volume inside the capacitor becomes, you see, this is energy, this is the volume. If you divide, you get this UE, which is one half epsilon naught E squared. So it means that there is this much energy is inside. There is this much energy uh, per unit volume. So this is called the energy density of electric field. So it seems that the potential energy stored in, the, in a charge capacitor is in fact due to the energy density of the electric field that is present in between the plates. So we say that the electric field has energy density. Whenever you have electric field in space, there's energy density in space. And the amount of energy depends on electric field and it is proportional to the electric field magnitude squared. And of course, we have one half epsilon naught there too. This result is general, which means that whenever there is an electric field present in space, we have an electric uh, energy density in space given by this equation. So this is very, very important. We're going to use that later on um, in, the, in the last chapter of this course. All right? Any questions? So this is a very interesting result. All right, this is an example. We connect a capacitor C1, eight microfarad. This is uh, C1 uh, to a power supply or a battery, uh, charge it to a potential difference of V naught, which is 120 volts. And disconnect the power supply, uh, switch is open in the figure. What is the charge Q naught on C1? And what is the energy stored U naught in C1? So these are simple questions. We have a uh, capacitor and we have voltage and we know that Q naught is equal to uh, C1 V naught, right? Q equal to CV and that is, uh, uh, eight micro eight, eight microfarad times 120 volts, right? So it becomes in how much? 960 micro coulomb. So Q naught becomes 960 micro coulomb. And then how much energy is there now? The energy um, U, you call it U naught, is equal to, you can do Q squared over two C, uh, Q squared over two C or one half V CV squared. 
And so if you, if you do that, one half CV squared with one half eight micro, uh, far, micro farad times uh, V, which is 120 squared, right? 120 squared is what? Um, that's four times 10 to the negative six times, uh, that is uh, 14400, right? Which is um, 144 times 10 to the 1.44 times 10 to the fourth becomes four times 1.44 is what? Um, how much is that? Anyway, we get some some number times ten to negative two. Uh, we have we have all these here. So eight microfarad times one one hundred twenty becomes nine hundred sixty microcoulomb. One half c one v naught squared four times v naught squared is 50, uh, fifty seven millijoule. So five point seven six is that's uh, one, four times one four four. It's five point seven six times ten to the negative two becomes 57.6 millijoules, all right? This is the answer to part A. Part C says capacitor C2 uh, is four microfarad and initially uncharged, be close to each S after uh, charge no longer flows. What is the potential difference across each capacitor and what is the charge on each capacitor? So now that this has this charge and it's not connected to the um, to the battery anymore, we close the switch here. So the charge distributes over these two, and now we have different charges. This gets charge Q1 here. This is Q2, and we need to get see how much is Q1, how much is Q2. All right. So uh, because we don't have much time, let's just showed you the result. We use conservation of charge and the fact that the final V is the same after the switch is closed. So conservation of charge gives you Q1 plus Q2, which is the final charges, equals the two total charge that we had, Q0. This is conservation of charge. And then V1 is equal to V2, it means that Q1 over C1 equal to Q2 over C2. So we have these two equations for two unknowns, Q1 and Q2. So Q2 from this equation, second equation is C2 over C1 uh, times Q1. We put it back in the first equation, Q1 plus Q2 equal to Q0. So we can say 1.5 Q1, C2 was, um, uh, C2 is four microcoulomb. So C2 over C1 is one half and Q1 is, uh, it's one half, this is one half, this is one. So one and a half Q1 is Q0. Therefore Q0, Q0 is 960 divided by 1.5. So Q1 becomes 640 microcoulomb. And then uh, Q2 is the rest of it from 960. Yeah. So three, 320. So, and V is Q1 over C1, which is Q2 over C2, the same, because they have the same potential. 640 over eight, or uh, you can write it as 320 over four. This is the same thing, 80 volts. V is 80 volts for both of them. And then um, the charge, we found the charge, we found the potential difference. What is the final energy U of the system? The final energy is one half Q1 squared over C1, C1 and this. So the energy on the first one and energy on the second one. If you calculate, you get this plus that, you get 25.6 millijoule plus 18 millijoule, 12.8 uh, millijoule. The total is 38.4 millijoule. And notice that these are different. Energy in this case is lost. And where does it go? That's very interesting uh, question to ask. We have, we have not enough tools to answer this question. I can answer that, but uh, you're not gonna fully understand it. 
uh, there is no resistor. If there was some resistor, you will see later on that the resistor dissipates energy. But if there's no resistor, when this happens, if you close the switch, there's a large current suddenly appears that you know some of the charges jump into the other one. And that creates a magnetic field and uh, the magnetic field changes, creates electric field and this electromagnetic field uh, propagates from this circuit. And that electromagnetic wave it carries energy that is the difference between these two uh, energies. Of course, if, if the uh, wires are um, ideal conductors, which is not the case. Some of the energy is lost in the wire and some of them goes to electromagnetic waves. And if they are superconductor, of course, there's no energy lost there. The energy goes all into the electromagnetic waves. All right? Okay, I stop here um, and we can continue next time on Wednesday. Any questions? <laughs>